Hello children. Today we are going to discuss about the vocabulary and the grammar part that is given in unit 5 of your textbook. In your textbook in unit 5, you have given about compound adjectives, phrasal verbs and the grammar part is related to adverbial classes. Now, let's begin our discussion with the compound adjectives. We all know that an adjective is a word that tells us the quality of a noun. And as uh, the name suggests, compound adjective. A compound adjective is a combo or combination of two adjectives and a word with another adjective before a noun. It becomes a compound adjective. The compound adjectives adjective may differ in meaning from the meaning of its components. Here I mean to say that the two words that are used to form a compound adjectives may have different meaning but when they are used as a compound adjective it will convey an entirely different meaning. Now some Let's see some possible combinations of compound adjectives. We have so many combinations. Uh, I will try to give you the details one after the other, with starting from uh, a number with the noun. Here, I mean to say is that if the word that describes about number is used along with the noun, it gives a compound adjective as in this example few is the word that describes the number and noun minutes is the word that is a noun and when these two words are used together as a combination it gives us a new compound adjective that is few minutes let's see another example three hours three hours Let's see one example that is taken from your textbook itself. Ten story. Ten story. Okay. Now, we can use adjective in combination with a noun to form a beautiful compound adjective like last minute. Last is adjective. Minute is the noun. See one more example. Full length. Full length. I am giving you one more example, short term, short term. You can use present participle along with an adjective uh, to form a compound adjective like in this example, good is the adjective, looking is present participle, you know the ing form of the verb is called as present participle, so good is adjective, looking is present participle. When used together, it is good looking. Now, I am giving you one more example. Long lasting, long lasting. Now, we can use present participle along with the noun in combination to give this, uh, to give the following compound adjectives like mouth watering. Mouth is noun, watering is present participle, mouth watering, time saving. You can use adverb along with a with past participle, uh, like as this, uh, like in this example, brightly lit. You can see that brightly is adverb here, and lit is the past participle of the verb light. So brightly lit, well known, well is adverb, known is the past participle of the verb new. Now, you can use adjective in combination with past participle. Uh, to give this uh, beautiful compound adjective like old fashioned ready made now a noun can also be used as a combo along with uh, an adjective like uh, in this example world famous now world famous is the compound adjective smoke free smoke free is the compound adjective. 
Now we can use noun in combination with the past participle to give this beautiful uh, compound object to middle aged, middle aged. See one more example, sun dried, sun dried. Okay, now all the combinations that I have discussed with you a little while ago are now given in the form of a table. You can see a number plus noun, adjective plus noun, adjective plus present participle along with the examples, noun plus present participle, noun plus adjective, noun plus past participle and adverb in combo with past participle and last but not the least adjective in combination with past participle along with the examples. Let's have a look at this table. Okay. Now I will move further. Okay. Now the second component of the vocabulary part in unit, from the unit 5 is phrasal verbs. A phrasal verb is one such uh, uh, technique I can, I can say that by changing, by bringing about a little change in the phrasal verb, we can change the meaning of the entire sentence. That is the beauty of the phrasal verb. And see, let us try to understand these phrasal verbs in detail. A phrasal verb is a verb followed by a preposition or an adverbial particle. It gives us a single independent unit of meaning here I mean to say that the verb part may have a different meaning, the preposition part may have a different meaning but when they are used together as a phrasal verb, uh, put together it, it, it conveys entirely, it conveys an entirely different meaning. Okay. Now, phrasal verbs are categorized into four different forms and they are Transitive phrasal verbs, intransitive phrasal verbs, separable phrasal verbs, and uh, inseparable phrasal verbs. Now let's try to understand what these types are in detail, along with some examples. Transitive phrasal verbs. Here, transitive phrasal verbs are those which require an object. It means that we know that um, in any sentence, a sentence consists of three main parts. One, the subject. Two, the verb. And the three, the object. Here it means that a verb requires an object. And such a kind of verbs are called transitive verbs. Now, if... This phrasal, if a phrasal verb requires for sure an object and that doesn't convey any full meaning, fuller meaning without an object, that is called transitive phrasal verb. Like as you can see in this example, she looks after the child. In this sentence, she is the subject. Look, in isolation, look, when separated, it's the verb. After is the preposition. Now we are using look plus after. Look after. As this is a sentence in which the subject is third person. Uh, verb takes S form. So she looks after is the phrasal verb. Now this particular phrasal verb doesn't convey any meaning without an object. So here it takes an object compulsory. So she looks after the child. You see one more example. They have called off the meeting. So who have called off the meeting? Of course they have called off. But they have what they have called off? They have called off the meeting. So here in this particular sentence the phrasal verb for sure requires an object. And without object that sentence goes meaningless. Now, <clears throat> let's try to understand. Here, without an object, the above sentences are meaningless. The second type of phrasal verbs, intransitive phrasal verbs. As the name suggests, intransitive means 
that doesn't require an object see uh, you can understand this particular intransitive phrasal verb with this following example the patient passed away so in this sentence we have we can see the subject and the verb for verb part verb part but it, it doesn't require any object because who has passed away the patient itself has passed away so it doesn't require any object here so the patient passed away see one more example the thief ran away okay now you can observe that object makes no sense here and such kind of phrasal verbs are called intransitive phrasal verbs now let's have a quick look at the separable phrasal verbs here separable means we can separate the two parts of the phrasal verb the two parts are one part no the first part is of verb and the second part is of the preposition so we can separate these two parts and use at different places in a single sentence and such a kind of phrasal verbs are called separable phrasal verbs so what words can be separated for using in different parts of a sentence for example turn on the lights is the actual the regular way of uh, uh, conversation uh, regular way of expressing one sentence but see here turn on is the phrasal verb what we are turning on we are turning on the lights you can separate turn and on and bring something else in the middle of these two words like uh, turn the lights on so this expression also uh, considered in english language so as we are separating turn and on and putting something else in between them so you can say that this is a separable phrasal verb see one more example i will pick up i will pick up you from the bus stand pick up is the phrasal verb but uh, what i am doing in the next sentence i am separating pick and up and bringing you in the middle i will pick you up from the bus stop so here yeah, pick up pick you up is separable phrasal verbs now the last one inseparable phrasal verb as the title suggest we cannot separate phrasal verb i mean the two components we cannot separate it if separated they goes meaningless so the words cannot be separated let's see an example he is looking at the poster you cannot separate looking and at so that doesn't convey any sort of sense so he is looking at the poster suppose if you separate it like this he is looking the poster it it doesn't carry any meaning it becomes senseless so here you are not supposed to separate looking at so he is looking at the poster is the right way of expressing expression see uh, i would like to give one important information here all intransitive verbs are inseparable in nature i repeat once again all intransitive verbs are inseparable phrasal verbs and uh, the grammar part that we are going to discuss in this fifth unit is adverbial clauses uh, uh the very beginning uh the very basic thing is that uh, a clause what is a clause a clause is nothing but a part of a sentence i can say that a half sentence for your understanding only i am telling you that a clause is nothing but a half sentence that doesn't makes any full sense this half sentence require a main sentence so for the main sentence we are using additional half sentence or additional sentence as a clause to make it more meaningful that's it so that becomes a adverbial clause so an adverbial clause is a dependent clause so we can say that we have we can see two clauses in complex and compound sentences one main clause and one dependent clause so an adverbial clause is a dependent clause it functions as an adverb entire clause modifies a verb an adjective or another verb it though it is an adverbial though it is a clause it contains a subject and a predicate okay 
Now, uh, in the form of a picture, I am trying to give you uh, more idea about the adverbial classes. An adverb class comprises a subject and a verb, and that's why not every group word is not every group word is an adverb class. All the at the start of every adverb class, there is a subordinate conjunction like after. Although, because, so, if, so that. So, you can identify an adverbial class by the words, by some conjunctions, like uh, after, although, because, so, and if, something like that. While, when. A sentence composed of a group of words that functions as an adverb and does not comprise of a subject and a verb, then it is an adverb phrase only. It is not called as adverbial class. Hope you got the clear idea about adverbial class. Now, what is the main function of an adverbial class? An adverb class is used in a sentence to add relevant and descriptive information to your content where we can use uh, what is the position of adverbial class in the sentence and what is the placement where we can use an adverbial class when an adverbial class is placed at the start of a sentence it is usually followed by a comma yeah if it is used at the end of the sentence it doesn't require any special punctuation okay keep this thing in your mind right there are certain uh, different types of adverbial classes uh, which are meant to denote different uh, components like time, place, condition, manner, reason, effect, comparison, contrast and purpose. So different conjunctions are used. Uh, here you can see a detailed list of different uh, adverbial class conjunctions. For example, if you are talking about time, you can use the words, conjunctions like when, whenever, before, after, as, while, uh, unit, as soon as, since. If you are talking about place, you can use the conjunctions like when, whenever, everywhere. In case of condition, if, unless, provided that. Uh, for manner, you can use the conjunction like, like, as though, as it. To talk about the reasons, you can use because, since, as. To talk about, the, to tell about the effect, you can use so, that, as a combination. And you can see, so is, so that is separated with another adjective there, such that. Uh, like so that, such that is separated with adjective. Uh, comparison, for to, com to compare, you can use when, whenever, everywhere. And uh, for contrast, you can use although, though, even it, even though. Uh, whereas, to talk about the purposes, you can use so that, lest, in order that. So, you have a detailed... Uh, uh, list of different uh, conjunction, adverbial conjunctions that you can use along with adverbial classes. Okay. Right. In your examination, uh, obviously you will be asked in such a way that uh, uh, some sentences, uh, the examiner will underline one sentence and he intentionally leaves one blank there. Okay. And underneath the passage, you will ask Question. You will ask a question like this. So let's see some sample questions. The first question. Blank. He thinks he is smart. He isn't. Here the right uh, conjunction will be although. Although he thinks he is smart, he isn't. Look at one more sample question. The second question. You should keep the milk in the fridge. Blank. It doesn't go bad. So here we are talking about the reason. So to convey the reason, we can use the conjunction so that. 
you should keep the milk in the fridge so that it doesn't go bad the third exam the third question blank he always did well on his english tests his parents were not surprised that he got it he got an a grade so here is he, here is he talking about uh, the result so since he always did well on his english tests uh, that's all for today folks bye